Has not God blessed this meeting? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. la, da, da, da. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We invite you in tonight, Lord. Hashabai. Come on in, eat none of my shack. Come on in, Lord. We invite you in. You've been with us all down through the services. Come on in tonight. Show yourself great, Lord. We praise you and we thank you and we magnify your name. Saints, we're in service. Saints, we're in prayer. Saints, we're seeking the face of the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. I heard somebody say, every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Hold up there and get in my key. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Just wait a minute, I'm going to let you hear it, and then you'll get it. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Hallelujah. 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 Every time I turn around, it keeps on healing me. Every time I turn around, he keeps on healing me. Every time I turn around, yeah, 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 he keeps on healing me. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 God, we've come into this place. We've gathered in your name tonight to worship you and to give your name praise. We honor you, God, for the blessings that you have been bestowed, bestowed upon us through these services. We ask that you would come in tonight, God. Do it again. Have your way tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your help tonight. Thank you for your strength tonight. Thank you for the services, God. Thank you for the word that we've been listening to. God, we've heard some powerful services, some powerful word. God, we ask that you would sink it into our spirits and into our souls. And as we gather tonight, come on in, God. Again, show yourself great as being the great God of all flesh. And finding out, God, that through your word and through your power and through your spirit, there's nothing too hard for you. Bless tonight. Keep us in your will, God, as we go. Again, God, we thank you so much for your touch, your healing, your word. My God, the word of deliverance has come forth through these men and women of God. How the power of the Lord is in this place. And tonight is nothing different. We will come to you as humbly as we know how in the name of Jesus. We ask the continued blessing and the strength on our leader. Look on the bishop, God, and bless him. Bless mother as well. Mm -hmm. 
And we ask that everyone, and we thank you, God, for the melodious choir, the music, the instruments, and your people that have been such a blessing. Let's give our instrumentals and our singers a hand. We thank you. And as we go further into the service, you will see the Lord come in even the more in a different way. God is just, you can't box him in. He's the God of all flesh and the God of all wisdom. And he uses his people. Isn't it amazing how God can take just little no dumbbells, some of us, and then the rest, whatever little bit. But he puts the spirit on the inside and uses it to bless people, some notable people and whatever. But we can honestly go to them and lead them to the Lord. And we thank you. We thank God. We thank the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. We thank God for our leaders, and we're so honored to introduce, not introduce, but to give you at this time, our, one of our wonderful men of God. Bishop Larry Perkins will come now and lead you further and instruct you. We thank God for Jesus. Let's just stand on our feet while he's coming and give the Lord some praise. See, I'm not used to quiet churches when it's time to pray. I'm not used to, I'm used to folks being excited about God. Larry! I'm used to folks hollering. I'm used to people telling the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your help tonight. Thank you for your strength tonight. Thank you for your peace tonight. Oh, 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 Jesus. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. We give God all the glory and all the honor that's due Him. The scripture says to us, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. And He makes manifest the Savior of His knowledge in Christ Jesus before us now. Tonight we're getting ready to see and feel the next move of God. We start out with the first segment, it's called The Challenges We Face. God knows that we do face challenges, but our God is bigger than any encounter that we face. And so therefore we raise our hands right now and we say, yes, Lord, yes to your will, and yes to your way, and yes to your honor. And so tonight we come with this, his arrival, your arrival, your expectation all the way with you knowing that God is gonna do his work. In the name of Jesus, we're going to ask the prayer warriors to come on this first segment. It's called The Challenges We Face. You will hear the music department flowing with us in regards to that. Amen. Let's get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your goodness and kindness. We thank you for your mercy. Now, God, we ask you to look on the single mothers. In the name of Jesus, God, those that are raising their children by themselves, God, provide for them. Make a way for them. Open the door for them. In the name of Jesus, provide food and clothing and shelter, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the youth everywhere, God. Rebuke the hand of the enemy. We come against sex trafficking. In the name of Jesus, oh God, go into the everywhere. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, remember the children, God, that are in the hospital, God. Remember the children 
that will have the hospitals full with this sickness. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Make a way for that parent that don't have health insurance. Make a way, God, for that parent that lost a job. Make a way, God, to provide for them, Lord. Pay their rent, God. Pay the mortgage. Bless them in school. In the name of Jesus, touch, Lord. We bind sex trafficking. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Make a way for your people. Touch their finances in the name of Jesus. Provide food, clothing, and shelter in the name of Jesus. You're able to do it, God. Bless them right now after they pay their tithes. Um, provide what's left. Um, stretch what's left. Um, make a way with what's left in the name of Jesus. Keep a roof over their head. Keep clothes on their back. Um, God is getting cold outside. Keep heat in their home in the name of Jesus. Bless the gas prices. Bring them down, God. Bring the gas prices down. Bring the oil prices down in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you're so able, God. Um, remember the hungry, God. Remember the homeless, God. Um, remember our youth, God. Um, we come against carjacking. Um, we come against rape. Um, we come against home invasions. Oh, Jesus, um, we're facing challenges, God. Um, oh, Jesus, um, look on our nation, God. Um, help our nation, God. Um, our nation is in trouble, God. Um, our political world is in trouble, God. Um, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, um, you are our help, God. Um, where am I, Jehovah? Where else can we go, God? Um, we need your help. We need your touch. Um, we need your strength. Um, we need your power. Power to hold on, God. Uh, power to go through. Uh, power, Lord. Um, send your power today. Um, in the name of Jesus, make the enemy behave. Um, bless everywhere. Bless in the schools. Uh, we come against school shootings, uh, massacre shootings. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we come against abduction, uh, abducting our children. Uh, bless our babies uh, as they go to school. Uh, protect them from the sexual pedophile. Protect our children. Uh, protect them from rape. Uh, protect them from drugs. Uh, protect them from homosexuality. Protect them from lesbianism. Touch the children. Bless the children. Bless them in school. Uh, help them to read. Uh, help them to learn. Uh, help them with their mathematics. Uh, help, Lord. Uh, help our children today. Uh, help, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory. You get glory, oh God. Uh, help us in the challenges. Um, God, we need help. Uh, we need your strength. Uh, we need power. Give us power to hold on. Power to hold on. We stand in the gap for the saints everywhere. Help us to hold on. Help us to hold on. Help us to hold on through sickness and diseases. Help us to hold on through this pandemic. Help us to hold on. Help, Lord. Without the Baha'i, without you with nothing. Without you with nothing. Without you with nothing. Without you with nothing. Help us, Lord. Help us. Lord, help us in our homes, help on our jobs, help in our neighborhood, help in our churches, help, Lord. Help, 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 Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. We're facing many challenges, challenges all around us. Challenges everywhere. Pastors are trying to get the churches back open, trying to get the membership back in the church. Hallelujah. Many challenges. Pandemic yet continue. Food prices are escalating. Many young people are in jail. Hallelujah. School shootings continue. Hallelujah. Relationships in the homes are falling apart. But God, but God, but God, but God, he's able. He knows all about it. He knows all about it. If we come together and pray, turn from our wicked ways, hallelujah, 
God has already promised a healing if we would just do what we've been told to do. If we would be obedient and turn from our wicked ways, God said in the word, I will heal you from heaven. I will heal your land. Come on, help me say, heal the land. Heal the land. Heal our conditions. Heal our problems. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do it again. Do it again for us. You've done it for other generations. Do it for us, God. Do it for us, Lord. Let us go back and turn back to holiness. Hallelujah. We desire to be like you. We want your spirit. We need your anointing. We need your power. Come on in. Come on in, Lord. Come on in, Lord. Come on in, Lord. Come in me. I need you now. Come in me. Look on our church, our presiding bishop, our general supervisor, as they lead us, hallelujah, back to holiness. Help us to go back, go back to our heritage, go back to our teaching, go back, help us to go back, God, help us to go back, God. We honor you now. We honor you now. We honor you now. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes. We cry loud. We cry long. We cry together. Come on, help me say it. We cry loud. We cry long. We cry together. Together we stand. Divided we fall. Together we can do it. We can be victorious. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Strengthen us now. Mother Kelly tonight. Strengthen our body. Keep us strong. In the name of Jesus. We need her. Keep us strong. Bless Mother Louise Patterson. Touch her in her body right now. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify your name. We say yes. 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 That we have cried loud, we cry long, we cry together, we usher in his presence in music. Hallelujah.
Everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Now you saw. Come down a minute. Now you saw the challenges that we're facing. But there comes a time in our life when we're drawn by his glory. There are certain things in life that will cause a man to leave his house and run to the house of the Lord. So our God is teaching us how to rest in him. He's teaching us how to tur return to the place where we know God can do anything but fail. So now we are drawn to his glory. We are drawn to his glory. Glory, Lord, and I'm a son of my Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Come on, you're my son. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. Come on, open up your mouth everywhere and declare it. Glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord. Hey, glory to God. Your glory, Lord. Your glory. In me, in me, in me. The Satana de Becura Masandia. In me, Satamanda Babo Satana. Lift your hands and open up your mouth and let the glory of the Lord be heard in the room. Come on, 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 and we open up our mouths and we glorify your name. For there is none like you in all of the earth. We come to glorify you. For your word declares that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. Father, we thank you tonight for your glory. Let there be an outpour. Rest upon us in the name of Jesus. As we're in this moment in time, we ask even God that you would breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Let the Ruach of God breathe on us and breathe in us. Oh God, we come tonight with our hands lifted and our mouths open, being drawn to your glory, being drawn to your presence. For the word of the Lord declares that this poor man cried and you heard him and delivered him. The prophet Jeremiah declared, cry unto me, cry unto me, cry unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You know, Lord, the needs of your people. You know, Lord, the desires of Skatabande. The under the Messiah, the more of your glory, 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 the more of your glory. Let there be a glory cloud in the room tonight. Fill the room tonight. City of Sandia, settle the dust of the enemy and fill the room tonight. Fill the room tonight. Fill every chair. Let deliverance break forth in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We won't take any credit. We won't take any glory. We won't take your glory, Lord. We won't take any credit for what you're doing. Clap those hands. Open up your mouth and give God glory. 
you to draw us, Lord. Raise our hands asking you to draw us to you. Draw us, Jesus. Solomon said, draw me and I will come running to you. And we need you, Baskosha Bessu. We need you, Lord. Some of us have tasted and seen that you are good. And we bless you now because we know you're good. You have healed our bodies. You have taken away cancer. You have touched us, Lord. Brought us through the pandemic. And we bless your name now. But we ask that you let your glory draw us to you. We want to honor you tonight. We want you to be pleased with the things that we do. And we look to you tonight, Father, to fill us with the more of you. Draw us, Jesus. Draw us, Jesus. Draw us, Jesus. We need you tonight. Our children are in trouble. Our government is in trouble. We need you, Lord. We ask you to help us tonight, Father. We need the more of you. We did not just come to be seen. We didn't come to be with the saints only. But we came because we want you to come the more, Jesus. Come the more, Jesus. Come the more, Lord. Sometimes you allow things to happen to us so that we can fall on our faces before you. So we don't come up, Coach Aya. We don't demand you say. We don't look at you with Keshavaya. How you know the wrong way, but we ask you tonight to draw us, Lord. Help us to see that you're trying to get us to come close to you. We need to bow down in your presence. Your presence is here. You've been here all week and we thank you Lord and we magnify your name somebody clap your hands and thank God for how he has blessed us for how he is touching us but we need more of him we want to see the things that we used to see. We want to see people come in in crutches and leave the crutches on the altar. We want to see people come in with cancer and leave without it. We want to see people who are unsaved come back and say, I want to be saved. Let your glory be revealed tonight. Let your glory be revealed tonight. Let your glory be revealed tonight. We ask you to be touch of here. Draw the bastard back to you. Draw him back. Draw her back, Lord. I know that say have your way tonight. We magnify you. We glorify you. We bless you now because there's nobody like you. I know say you short. We're just your children. And we have need of you. We have need of you, Father. You've been taking care of us. You've been protecting us. And we ask you now that you will have your way tonight. Help us to cry out to you. We want to be like that woman who cried because out to the Lord. And they told her, back up. But the Bible says they cried the more that man cried out and the Bible says they cried the more help us to cry out to you help us to acknowledge you father we need you we need you Jesus we need you Lord we need you Jesus draw Draw me, Lord. Draw me, Lord. Bring me in, Lord. And I'll come running. Coming, I'm coming, I'm after coming. After you. Shabbat. Everybody. Draw me. 
and say you win you celebrate because I have something for you that nobody else can give you the very moment you say I'll be there in a minute Lord I'm on my way Lord do a new thing in my soul this is what Solomon says from me we will run after thee the king has brought me into his chambers we will be glad and we will rejoice right there. Hallelujah. After God has grown you, and after God has corrected you, after God has let you know that these challenges you face can't control you, the Lord said, let's go to the next place in me. It's called the foundation of holiness. It will propel us into our future. This is what the scripture says. Draw not nigh hither. Put off your shoes for the ground that you stand on is holy ground. Our church recognize and realize holiness is the way. Holiness is the way. Holiness is the way. Holiness is the way. Come on, everybody. Holiness. Hallelujah. We're standing on holy ground. 
We're standing on holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. We're standing on holy ground. Lord, you hear love you. We're standing on holy ground. We're worshiping you. We're giving you praise. We're giving you glory. We honor you, Lord. We extol you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Hallelujah. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Lord, we are yes, Lord. We are yes, Lord, church. We are yes, Lord, church. We say yes to your will, Lord. We say yes to your will, Lord. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. We say yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, God, because you filled us with the Holy Ghost. You filled us with the Holy Ghost. And we are yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. We say yes all day long. We say yes. Yes in the morning. Yes in the noonday. Yes in the evening time. We say yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell him yes. Down in your sanctified soul. Tell him yes. Yes when we want to say no. Yes, when it doesn't seem right, we say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes to your will. Yes to your will. Yes to your will. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the yes, Lord. Thank you for being a yes church. Thank you for being sanctified. Thank you for being holy. Thank you, Lord, for building us on a solid foundation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your glory. To your name, Lord. We say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Hallelujah. Our answer is yes. Our answer is yes. Our answer is yes. Our answer is yes. Yeah, God, yes. Yes to your will and way. Yes, we'll obey. Yea, God, yea. Ba, 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 ba. Yea, God, yea. Ashika, ashika. Until we walk like you want us to walk. Ba, 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 ba. Until we talk like you want us to talk. Ba, 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 ba. Until we live like you want us. Hey, Shando. Live. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hey! Yes, Haba Shano. Yes, 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 yes. But he won't say yes. Hobaba Shano. But he won't say yes. Hadadadabo say. But he won't say yes. He cannot have a sander. But he. Hey! But he won't say yes. Hobaba Shoa. Hobaba Shikonobo say. Hadadadabo say. He won't say yes for real. He won't say yes for real. He won't say yes for hey. He won't say yes for real. Hey! He won't say a yes for real. He won't say a yes for real. Tell him yes. 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 Oh, he won't say a yes for real. Oh, my, 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 shadow. 
power. Yes, we'll obey. Yes, we'll obey. Yes. Yes, we'll obey. Yes, we'll obey. Yes, we'll obey. Somebody tell the Lord yes. Somebody tell the Lord yes. Somebody tell the Lord yes. Until we walk like he wants us to walk. But she wants a real yes. He wants a real yes. He wants a real yes. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God. And Lord, our soul said yes to you on tonight. Uh, Lord, our soul says yes to you on tonight. Uh, Lord, our heart says yes to you on tonight, God. Uh, yes to your will and yes to your way, God. Uh, yes to a life of holiness, God. Uh, for you said without holiness, no man, boy, or girl shall see the Lord. Uh, so, God, we thank you tonight, Lord. Uh, we thank the ball.
everybody, let's give God glory. The foundation of holiness will propel us to do everything God has for us. If you and I want to get where God will have us, we're going to have to ride on the wind of his holiness. So we say, let that power fall on us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you for doing what you've done. Thank you for the week of prayer, the times of prayer. And Lord, we ask you that you would anoint us one more time, that your will be done in us. The foundation of God stands here. The Lord knows them that are his. And since we're his, we still say yes to his will. We're going to ask the presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, to come and do our closing prayer. Amen for the prayer ministry. And I want to tell you all right now, he has been the wind underneath our wings. He's been the one that said, go, 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 go. And so therefore, we want to hear his voice. God has anointed him to share with us these last few minutes. And I want to tell God, thank you. We were drawn to his glory. We talked about the challenges that we face. Now we hear the voice of the leader. Let's give God praise and glory. Lord, I thank you today. Lord, I praise you today. Lord, I bless your holy name. There's none like you in all the earth. Oh, God, you rule and you super rule man is trying but you already know God and God we come to say thank you tonight we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you for your loving kindness thank you for your tender mercy oh come on saints pray with me thank you now Lord thank you for your healing virtue oh God thank you now you sent your son amongst us and we say thank you we say thank you for your son we say thank you that your son gave his life. We say thank you. We say thank you for his life. Hey, 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 that set us free. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so we say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Our mind says yes. Our heart says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what he wants from us. That's what he wants from us. Church, that's what he wants from us is a yes, Lord. I'll give up everything to follow you. I'll give up everything to follow you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you say yes to it, he'll open up a way. If you say yes to it, there's enough healing virtue in the hem of his garment to heal all manner of disease. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for making a way for us. Thank you for opening doors. Thank you, God, for safe passage to this place here. And we say yes. We say yes. Yes to your will. Because you've been so good. Because you've been so kind. And we pray now, Lord, that we'll leave this place better than we came. We're going back to our home. But God, we pray now. We pray now that you will anoint us afresh. Anoint us, Lord. We come against the hand of the enemy that will make us go back to where we were. But we say yes, a yes to a new me, a yes to a new heart, a yes to a new anointing, a yes, Lord. Come on, church. We cannot go back to where we were. We got to go to another dimension. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I say yes. 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 <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're healing our minds. You're healing our minds. You're 
regulating the heart. You're fixing us now. And we say yes. And we say yes. Have your way. Have your way. Search our hearts. If you find anything that shouldn't be there, take it out now. Take it out now. We want to be saved. We want to be whole. Look on us now. In the name of Jesus, say that I command you in the name of the Lord to drop your weapon and flee. I command you in the name that's above every name. You've got to run from here. We resist you. We cast you out. We're not begging you. We're not asking you. But we command in the name that's above every name. Loose your hope. Loose the mind. Loose the mind. Loose the will. And we say yes. Oh, Lord. And we say yes. And we say yes. And we say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woman, be healed. Man, be delivered. Your deliverance is in the room now. If you just say yes to it, if you just give up to it, if you just let go, let go of everything that's not like him. He can turn it around for you. He can turn it around for you. He can turn it around for you. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe it's happening right now. I wish I had some right now, people. I believe it's happening right now. Your body's being healed right now. Your heart being regulated right now. Your mind being delivered right now. Somebody say right now. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. And I praise you for it. I wish somebody would praise him. Praise him for your deliverance. Praise him for your health. Praise him for your deliverance. Praise him for your health. Praise him for it. Oh, I hear the Lord saying, praise me. And I'm going to turn it around. Praise me. Yay! Praise me. Praise me. Praise me. And I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to turn it around. You got to believe it. It's turning around now. You got to believe it. You're being delivered now. You got to believe it. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The devil is defeated. I said the devil is defeated. I said the devil is defeated. Tell three people to say right now. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, my, 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 Somebody ought to praise him for it. Praise him for your deliverance. Praise him for your healing. Praise him for your finances. I hear the Lord saying, I'm fixing it. When you get back home, it won't be the same if you believe it by faith. Give him praise for it. Yeah, blah, blah, blah.
Sunday evening worship. Our presiding bishop keeps telling us to praise God. Somebody just say with me, say, say bumblebee. Come on, say it again, bumblebee. The bumblebee has the ability to flap its wings 280 beats per second. When it flaps its wings 280 beats per second, it generates heat 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Every now and then, a hornet or a wasp will penetrate the hive. The bee understands that its stinger is not strong enough to penetrate the outer shell of the wasp or the hornet. The bee also understands that if it stings, it loses its stinger, it dies. So when an enemy penetrates the hive, instead of using their stinger, they get around the hornet and start flapping their wings. They generate so much heat that it burns the enemy up. Every time you hear somebody say, praise the Lord tonight, think about the bumblebee and start flapping your spiritual wings. When the enemy comes against your children, if he's coming against your home, if he's coming against your marriage, if he's coming against your body, just start flapping your spiritual wings and generate some fire that will burn up the enemy. Oh, come on and praise him. Come on, let's set up a praise in this house. Tonight, we, we're not going to pump and prime you tonight. We're going to have church tonight. Pass the word down your road. Say, we're going to have church tonight. Tell your neighbor, this is a praising road. And if you don't want to praise him, you're going to have to get off this road. Invocation is coming by the Bishop Taro D. Golden, Sr., prelate of Idaho jurisdiction, Old Testament reading, Superintendent Carlton Charles, Florida Southwest jurisdiction, Bishop Anthony W. Gilliard, prelate, New Testament reading, Supervisor Taria Johnson, British Columbia, Canada jurisdiction, Bishop Benjamin Stevens, prelate, and they will be followed by Sin Judah First International Worship Team. Let's praise the Lord tonight. Pray with me. Most gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. There is no need to invoke your presence, for you are already here. But Lord God, we thank you, and so we invoke your presence for the moment, because the moment requires a specific praise. It requires a specific trajectory. Father, you've healed some this week. You've touched some this week. You've given revelation to some this week. You've already moved on others this week. But Father, we're asking now, since you've already moved, we're simply showing up to say, do whatever it is that you want. Whatever, however you want to touch us, oh God. However you want to move, oh God. In the name of Jesus, touch us tonight, oh God. Put clapping back in somebody's hands. Put stomping back in somebody's feet. Put 
joy back in somebody's heart. In the name of Jesus, as we leave here this week, help us to go back to healing. Help us to go back to restoration. Help us to go back to deliverance. Help us to go back to boldness. Father, whatever you want to do, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in us. We're already ready. Stir up the gift that's on the inside of us. In the name of Jesus, move on our behalf. In Jesus' name, move for my children. Move for my family. Move for my state. Move for the lost. In the name of Jesus, do whatever you want to do tonight in Jesus' name. And my soul says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. We're going to clap our hands and give God praise. I thank the Lord for this opportunity. And I thank our presiding bishop, the greatest leader in the world, Bishop J. Drew Shear. Thank you, sir. I have your Old Testament scripture on tonight, coming from the book of Psalms, 119 division, verses 149 through 159. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness. O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of the old that thou hast founded them forever. Consider mine affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies. Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved, but they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. I'll be reading your hearing for the New Testament scripture, St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 37th through the 48th verse in the King James Version. And the word of the Lord reads, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, Go with him twain, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that will, would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. But I say unto you, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. I'm going to say that one more time. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. 
For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do, do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so? But ye therefore perfect. Be ye therefore perfect. Somebody say, be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Surely we love the Lord on tonight. We just want to give him some glory because he's been so good to us.
to lift your hands in sweet surrender unto our God who has been better to us than we could be to ourselves. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. We bless you, God. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for being so good. Ooh. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good, oh, to me, me. Come on, if you know it, come on and sing it with us. Oh, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. You've been so good. 
you have been faithful. All of my life you have been good. So I gotta praise you, Lord. You've been so good. Everybody lift your voice and say, so Before I came to the convention, I received a phone call from my doctor. And I had been, <clears throat> wanted to make sure that my body was able to handle this convention. And so, the doctor called me two weeks before coming in here and said, ran all of your blood work I want you to know that everything looks great said that June your blood level your creatinine and your A1C was at 5.8 in June and two weeks ago it was 5.6 so she said you haven't been diabetic since June and so my wife said does she know she's talking to you because you've been a diabetic for 10 years I said doc you know you're talking to Myron Williams she said I know who I'm talking to I said but I've been diabetic for 10 years and the Holy Ghost said are you getting ready to talk yourself out of this healing or are you just going to accept this healing and so a song rose up in my spirit that Mr. Clean, Uncle Richard wrote that says, let the healing Get to seven people and tell them I am here. 
believe what you just declared there's a song says somebody put a praise on it if you believe what you just declared somebody put a praise on it if you believe what you just declared put a praise on it come on open your mouth and put a praise on it
Listen, people of God, there is a, there's a book that's entitled What Happens When Men Pray. But I'm wondering if I can get about 100 men. What happens when men pray? I wonder if I can get about 100 men. I've been seeing mother in the aisle every night, but I wonder if I could get about 100 men just to come down here in the middle and give God some praise. So the Bible said, when the earth was coming back, David danced before the... I want to see some men. I want to see you dance like a man. I want you to stop. The devil's neck. Come on, praise it. What happens when men praise it? What happens when men give him praise? What happens when men? What happens when bishops praise him? What happens when a bishop praises God? What happens when a district superintendent praises God? What happens when men in the choir praise God? We don't let the devil know that men can praise him. Men can glorify him. Men can magnify him.
and worship and I'm getting ready to turn it over to Bishop White but she said you've been so good you've been so good you've been so good for so so me If the Lord has been good to you, raise your hands and say, You've been so good. You've been Brought you through two and a half years so of the pandemic. You've been so good to me. One last time. your hands. Come on, get the kink out your elbow. Lift him up. Lift him up. Give God the fruit of your lips. Come on. Thank you. 
to God. Be the glory to God. Hallelujah. Be the glory for the things he has done with his blood. Can you thank him for the blood right now? He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God. Be the glory for the things he has done. Let the church say, Come on, Zion. to say this let's not insult the presence of the Lord we're going to give an offering of thanksgiving I'm not going to discriminate from a gender perspective I just want to know is there anyone in here this evening that's thankful? I'm looking for some witnesses now. Any And so I want all of us to give an offering of thanksgiving. We're going to give an offering of thanksgiving. We're grateful for this 114th Holy Convocation. Every speaker, we are grateful for hearing a word from the Lord. Our presiding bishop poured into us earlier on today, and we are thankful. Every gift that has been sown, every life that has been changed, all who have been inspired by your presence, not only in this particular sanctuary, but all of you who have joined us via streaming, the various platforms, and you there in your residence, I want you to pause from what you are doing right now and join with us in this sanctuary. In fact, I'm grateful. Let's just lift that. Let's make one big quiet, just one quick second and let's sow a seed of thanksgiving on this evening. And here's what I want you to do. I'm honored to serve as your Secretary of Finance, and if the Lord's willing and the assembly permits, I'd love to give a financial uh, report of activity on tomorrow morning for what has transpired on this week. But just allow me to say to you like this, God has richly blessed this convocation because of people like you who have been generous in sowing your seed. And I want every thankful man, every thankful woman, we're going to do it like this tonight. Matter of fact, 
Let me just see all the grateful people stand to your feet. Who's thankful? Just stand. Mm-hmm. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Let's worship one time together. Lift your hands. Can we sing that together? Everybody, I am. Come on. I am grateful for, for the things that you have done. Everybody say. Yes, I am grateful for the victories. I could go on. About your word, about your word. Because, because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart, from hallelujah. My heart. We give worship to the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want every thankful, grateful person to do this. I want you to sow a seed of thanksgiving, and it's an amount we all can do together. And if we do it together, I truly believe God will indeed give us his approval like no other time. I want everyone to get a $25 seed in your hand. What did I just say? Everybody, everybody, every grateful person, every grateful man, you see the very Happy Sunday you. evening. What a blessed oh, time we're having in this wonderful last evening of our 114th Holy Convocation. This is Elder Terrell McCoy. I do have with me none other than Dr. Carla Galbraith, who is doing a wonderful job and uh, doing everything that the Lord has allowed us to do with this great and awesome opportunity. Listen, the Spirit of the Lord is here. No gimmicks, no games, Carla, but it's time for you to sow a seed of thanksgiving. You hear Bishop White speaking to us even right now. He's asking for us to sow a seed of $25. And Carly, he said that is a seed that so many of us can do. All of us can do We can do it. If we make that sacrifice tonight of $25, if that is you, Carla is going to give you five ways that you can sow into this praise, into this worship tonight, into this thanks giving worship that is taking place right here, right now. You definitely see the QR code at the bottom of your screen. We have koji.org. Everything you need is there. We have Givelify. And finally, you can, not finally, you can text to give. Text C-O-G-I-C there. And also, you can call our toll-free number, which is 888-880-1040. Make sure you give tonight. Yes. Don't let this convocation close out without you sowing a seed of thanksgiving. Unbelievable this morning, our presiding bishop brought a message to us, his first message to a body. Last year, he was able to preach, but he had to preach over the way of the internet. Yes, virtually, We had to yes. shout in our homes, mm -hmm. but today, we heard the voice of our leader in person, and God knows his anointing was all over our presiding And even bishop. tonight, the bishops are singing, the people are praising, we're kind of dragging, just, just full of praise, here, but we're man. still giving you, in the drag. You feel which, the yes. Weight of God's anointing. Yes. We just got done shouting. Yes. I saw Bishop, uh, 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 Bishop Hines yes. up there with a tambourine. Had a tam beating, Bishop not playing Michael, it, beating Bishop it. Michael Hill, Detroit yes. Zone. Huh? Detroit You're trying Zone. It tonight. Yes. General Board Bishop, member Bishop Michael Hill yes. was clapping on the two and four, picking them up was, and putting them down. I'm telling you, the Lord is in this place. And so is. tonight is the conclusion of our worship experience, but tomorrow starts the business of the church. Yes. And Carla, Dr. Carla, being one of we'll our wonderful elected 
trustees will have a lot to do on tomorrow. We will. Our general assembly starts at 9 a.m. It does. It does. And we will conduct the business of the church. And so I am so thankful that we are holy people and sanctified people. We don't have church business meetings as others, but the no. Lord is with us in our church business meeting because we are a church of love. You know, all week we've talked about because you give, Kojic does. We have given several examples, tangible examples of what the church is doing. Right. And we're proud of the church. We're godly proud. We're going to keep on doing those things. I know this is our last night together. Oh, I'll be back in the West Coast. Uh, and you're going back so to sorry. the Midwest. So sorry for you. Go the Golden <laughs> State. But I'm going to keep giving while I'm there. Listen. Listen, don't let this moment pass you yes. by. There's a sweet spirit in this place. I know you feel it because the yes. anointing is tangible. It's heavy right the now. The anointing is here. And if the anointing is yes. here, we know it is inside of your room, even in your hospital room right now. I speak healing to your bodies now in the name of Jesus. We speak over your children. We speak over your grandchildren. We speak over your finances even right now. Hallelujah. I feel God's power even right now. I speak to your circumstance. I speak to your situation. And if you begin to give God praise right now, it is my pastor, Bishop Philip Robert Jackson, that always says it's in the praise. It is in your praise. Lift your hands right now. Right, that's right. Wherever you are, Wherever you I are. want you to lift your hands yes. and begin to give yes, God yes, yes. a thankful praise. And I believe God's going to turn that thing around. He's already just turning it around. Evangelist uh, Renee Winston on Women's Day testified about receiving a full refund of her daughter's tuition and since then everyone's been texting her about refunds full i know someone right now that had their full hotel room come on two thousand dollars refunded god's Listen. doing it when you give god sees what you're doing i absolutely love it listen i know they're going to be wrapping us up soon but yes. i cannot allow them to wrap us up dr carla without saying no, thank no. you Thank to you. our presiding bishop uh -huh. for allowing us for allowing to us. have this wonderful yes. opportunity all week long. You don't see this gentlemen that are behind right. these cameras, but these guys have been working all week long. Yes. To Brother Robert Coleman, to Brother Steve Harris, thank you so much for this opportunity. We're going back into our worship service. God bless you from this 114th Holy Convocation. It's always a joy and pleasure to give honor to our presiding bishop, the eighth in succession, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard. We celebrate you tonight, Bishop, and we thank you for the word that you rendered to us today. To our first and second assistant presiding bishops, all the members of the general board, to our beloved mother, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, and uh, the assistant general supervisors, to the elegant and lovely first lady, Dr. Karen Clark Sheard, and to all who have gathered here. The announcement tonight will be very short because the only few announcements I have to give you is that there's still an update from the Office of the General Secretary. There are a few registered delegates who have not picked up your delegate badge. Therefore, we will open the office tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. The office will open tomorrow at 8 a.m. until 10 in room 112. This morning, I announced that the Credentials Committee of the General Assembly would be distributing the access key, which will be necessary for admittance to the General Assembly. The Credential Committee is located in the registration area of the convention and will remain open tonight until 9 p.m. There are more than a thousand of you who have not picked up your access key. They're gonna remain open until 9 p.m. tonight, and they will open tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Again, you must have your badge and your access key in order to enter the General Assembly. This afternoon when I was downstairs in, with the area that is handing out the access keys, I was asked why was it necessary to have an access key. 
Why was the change? Why didn't we get the access key when we registered? There are now two separate processes and the access keys did not arrive until yesterday. The General Assembly is always improving ways to serve the delegates. And tomorrow when you enter the General Assembly, you will receive a device into which the access key is to be placed. From that device, you will participate in the proceedings of the General Assembly. It may, to be, it may appear to be a slight inconvenience, but I'm sure that you will appreciate the upgrade. Mother Lewis, Mother Huey, Mother Gatlin, Mother Walton, tomorrow your cards, keys, and devices will be placed in the hands of your executive secretary. Bishop Sheard and general board members, tomorrow morning I will personally deliver your cards, key, and devices, as well as those of your wives. The General Assembly will begin at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And again, by the direction of the Constitution, the first item of business is the election of the chairman and then also the, two, the vice chairman. The convocation ends tonight, but you can take the services home with you. You can order DVD and CD sets at the media table. Do not leave this convocation without taking all these great messages with you, especially the message from today. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you at our next national meeting, which is in January 2023 in Dallas, Texas, at our leadership conference. The entire 2023 calendar will be given during the General Assembly session. Thank you, and please turn your attention to the screen. Memphis challenge to provide more affordable housing has been answered by the Church of God in Christ. There are many other properties here in, in Memphis that uh, the Church of God in Christ is responsible for and now we've got 20 more units which brings our total of affordable housing up to 101. We are the owners and developers of 20 units of affordable housing known as 2A Advanced Flats. The $4 million project currently has requests for over 60% occupancy. The project allows the Church of God in Christ to bring 101 affordable housing units to downtown Memphis. The work that Kojic has been doing over the many years of its existence uh, has grounded uh, people in this community. Uh, it's been a pillar, a hub of, of safety uh, where you can express yourself, you can express your joy, your grief, your pain. All of those things are helped by having a church that cares. And this church cares, and you can see it. Uh, it's not just something that they talk about. You can physically stand in front of it and take a picture of it. There are people whose lives are going to be enriched and better as a result of having stable housing. The Church of God in Christ is the owner and developer of this project, and we have plans to build an additional 120 affordable housing units in downtown Memphis. The Church of God in Christ continues to provide hope, strength, and security to those who need it, and because you give, Kojic does. Christmas came early for some in Memphis through Christmas in November. I just thank God for him and the Church of God in Christ. It really means a lot to me, you know, because I got a, a little one, and it helps me get my little ones together, little clothes and shoes and pampers for the newborn I have on the way. It brought joy to my heart and a blessing to my family. General Board members Bishop Brandon Porter and Bishop David Hall co-chaired this community fair designed to serve the underserved in the Memphis area. 4,000 people registered and 6,000 attended the annual event and some even waited in line as early as 7 a.m. last Saturday at Greater Community Temple Church of God in Christ to receive essentials such as free groceries clothing, and COVID-19 testing and vaccinations. The Church of God in Christ's goal is to meet the spiritual and physical needs. And because you give, Kojic does.
Thank you, Bishop Shield. Thank you, Church of God in Christ. I love you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bishop C.H. McClellan, excited to invite you to the premier leadership conference of the Church of God in Christ. It begins January 16th through the 19th, 2023, there in Dallas, Texas, at the Hyatt Regency, Dallas. You need to be a part of this exciting moment where you will hear the vision and the voice of our presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard. You can, in fact, go to our Kojic.org website to get registered. We're doing both the virtual as well as the gathering. It's going to be an awesome experience while we present to you five major tracks that have five sessions under each track. And that track will cover uh, the, a gamut of information that will cause your ministry to become even greater than what it is. I know you want to be a part of it. We look to see you there. It'll be a wonderful gathering of the saints of God, of the Church of God in Christ. We'll hear great teaching, preaching, and ministry that meets human needs. You will hear visions that be shared by our presiding bishop on ministries of partnership that are being birthed in this grand old Church of God in Christ. You don't want to miss this moment. January 16th through the 19th, 2023, Dallas, Texas, Hyatt Regency, Dallas. Join us and register on our Kojic.org website. Until then, be blessed. Hello, everyone. I am Superintendent Nathaniel L. Green, President of the International Youth Department. I'm inviting you to join us for Calibrate 2023. We met just this year, and they came from all over the world. Guess what? We're about to do it all over again, right here in Dallas, Texas, at the Grace Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. And our thing, you may ask, it's into the wild. Our youth and young adults are living in a wild world, and it's going to take some unique tools to bring them back to Jesus. Just go to our website, kojic.org forward slash IYD, and you can register right now because this is going to be our opportunity to breathe life into necessary leadership to save a necessary generation. Join us, Calibrate 2023. It's going to be amazing. One of the pillars of faith as a believer is to hope. But what is hope and how do you have hope? Joining the ranks of some of the world's most prominent thought leaders of faith and renowned orators, our presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard, presents a new six-day devotional that will walk you through what hope is and how it can sustain you. Get your hopes up and start this plan today, now on version.
Before we hear the voice of our great leader, there's a gentleman here that will make several presentations. He is the president of the Sacramento Theological Seminary and Bible College. I'm going to ask Mr. Ronald C. Bradford if he will come now. Come on, let's give him a hand as he comes. Giving all honor to God, who's truly the head of my life. And this is one time to celebrate him in this, in this prestigious time. I have a few awards to bestow on some very prestigious people who are helping the community. And they have done so much work that it has to be recognized. It took me 12 years of education to get two doctorate degrees, but these guys have been on the firing line for 30, 40 years in the community, changing the scope of things for all of you and all of us. So we have honorary doctorate degrees for Bishop John Drew Shears. It wouldn't be right to bestow one upon him and not the person who knows more about him than any of us in the room, Karen Clark Shears. You know, I, I know Kojik. I, my mother was Pentecostal, and um, she's from a small town in Texas. I'm, I'm from Seattle, Washington, and that's where she mag, uh, migrated to. Thank you. The next uh, category is someone who had touched my, you know, my, I have advisory boards when they vet people and they look at their background and so forth. And, and this person here, I, I, I couldn't believe that we were waiting for so long to bestow this honor for him, upon him. And that's Bishop Lawrence Marcellus Wooden. Once again, it would be not right for me to honor him and not honor the person that knows more about him than any of us in this room. And I was so welcomed by her because I was kind of lost when I came to town. And uh, my colleague gave me uh, her number and I said, are you sure you think I should call her? She says, you'll see. And when I called her, she was so welcoming and, and, and attentive. But in any case, she deserves one as well. Shirley Wooden. This last one, um, Dr. 
Benjamin Jamerson Phillips. I know some of you have heard that name before. Uh, he's a colleague of mine. He's a director and a producer and a writer. I'm a writer as well. And some years ago, I was uh, researching uh, black churches. And then I needed some more information, and uh, someone put me on to him. And him and I have been friends ever since. We made a movie that was going to be the premiere here at the theater, but he got a little ill, and he couldn't make it. And um, he asked me to do it, and uh, I just didn't feel comfortable. Although I'm, I'm getting credits as a writer and an ex executive producer, he is light years ahead of me in writing. And, uh, but then anyway, he put me on to someone else. Posthumously, he said, you should give this person an award. She, and I checked it out, and he was right. She had done so much in changing the scope of Christian music in the Kojic um, organization that I had to recognize her. And I'm talking about Maddie Moss Clark. Thank you. I, I had to. And reading what I read was just, whew, outstanding, outstanding. God bless you. You're blessed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. My brothers and sisters, whenever the President of the United States is about to enter the room, there is a gentleman that is called the crier. He comes into the room, stands at the podium. He does not talk about the president's awards. He does not talk about where he matriculated. All he says is, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. That office says it all. I'm gonna ask you to stand and receive in my estimation the greatest leader this side of heaven will you put your hands together my brothers and sisters for the presiding bishop the bishop J. Drew Shear God bless please be seated in the presence of the Lord where's your dad come here Bishop George Davis Come here, sir. Bishop George Davis uh, is one of the fathers of our church now, but he has served this church on the adjutancy for many, many years, and we appreciate him. Come on, y'all, let's appreciate Bishop George Davis. We love you, Dad Davis. God bless you. And his son is kind of taken over there. That's a Elder Davis, and we praise God for you. God bless you, man. You dressed up today. All right, God bless you. Let's give him another hand. We certainly give honor to God. We thank him for being saved and sanctified, filled with God's precious Holy Ghost. We had a time tonight, didn't we? Look at somebody and say, it ain't over yet. Yeah. I certainly want to thank God for our general board. I want to try to do this uh, uh, right for the last time. Uh, our first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop J.W. Macklin. Our second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Lawrence Wooten. Our secretary of the general board, Bishop Brandon Porter. Our assistant secretary who is presiding tonight, Bishop Michael Hill. We praise God for Bishop Darrell Hines, Bishop Prince Bryant, Bishop David Hall, Bishop Malcolm Colby, Bishop C.H. McClellan, and Bishop Elijah. Every time I turn around, Hankerson. Let's give the general board a hand. We certainly want to make mention that um, 
uh, Bishop Blake and uh, Lady Blake sent a message today while they were watching and they just wanted to, the church to know that they love you and they appreciate you. Let's give them another hand. God bless the Board of Bishops, Bishop Galbraith, and to all of the members of the Board of Bishops. And we praise God. Uh, we praise God for uh, our General Secretary. And um, we praise God for our uh, Administrative Assistant, Michael Eady, and the pastors and elders, the members of the Trustee Board and the Judiciary Board. We praise God for you on today. Lord have mercy. I thank God for Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis. She uh, sent Sister Helen Massey to me with that love token for the, well, with that support seed for the church, first of all. And I told Sister Massey, I said, I could pick you up and turn you around. And I told Mother, I said, Mother, I feel like picking you up, but I didn't do it. We praise God for Mother Barbara. Let's give her a hand. Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. Mm -hmm. I certainly praise God for my lovely wife, Evangelist Karen Clark Sheard. God bless our general supervisor, Emerita. Mother Willie Mae Rivers is out tonight, and we praise God for her. Amen. And uh, we thank God for the general board members' wives and, and the bishops' wives, all the supervisors. I better go back because, um, let me see, I said the bishops' wives. How about the supervisors' husbands? <laughs> the supervisors' husbands. All right. And uh, what a joy to have a dear friend and brother, one of America's most outstanding preachers, the Reverend Dr. Frank Ray, pastor of the New Salem Baptist Church and co-chairman of Pastors and Ministers Division Board of Directors. Dr. Ray, please stand, man. God bless you. What a joy to have you tonight. Amen. Uh, we are so thankful for our evangel evangelism department or evangelist department, uh, the uh, one and only President Gary Sprewell and Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. They have been doing outstanding work. They have recorded Alter Street Prison, per uh, P um, let me say this again, people from... Um, I think this is on the street, uh, who have been ministered to by the evangelist department and in their service, and they've gone to the prisons, and 173 people have been saved. 169 backsliders have been reclaimed, and 20 people have been filled with the Holy Ghost and 123 people have received their healings. Come on, let's praise God for the work of the evangelist department. Keep up the good work, Pastor Spreewell and Dr. Cole. And on last night, the young people were here and they had a tremendous service and we praise God for Superintendent Nathaniel Green and Evangelist Vandalin Kennedy. Let's give them a hand. Well, it's preaching time and we are blessed today to have one of our church's great bishops, Bishop Titus Daniel Littleton. It, He is the prelate of the Mississippi Southern First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. He, he, he also serves as pastor of Greater Deliverance Church of God in Christ, a progressive ministry serving communities in two locations, Forest and Byram, Mississippi. Additionally, 
He is senior pastor of the historic liberal Trinity Church of God in Christ in Jackson, Mississippi. A native of Jackson, Bishop Littleton is a graduate of Lanier High School and Phillips College. He also attended Jackson State University. Wow. Where he studied business administration. Bishop Littleton earned numerous certificates in information technology and management and served 29 years in the information technology department of the Jackson Public School District. Retiring in 2010, and I, excuse me, an irate administrator, and they devoted his life to full-time ministry. Bishop Littleton is married to Wanda Littleton. They have two daughters and one son-in-law and six grandchildren. My brothers and sisters, you will not find a greater man than Bishop Daniel Titus Littleton. After the, the music department, thank you, Dr. Myron Williams, for a job well done on this week. And after they have given their final rendition, the next voice you will hear will be that of the one and only Bishop Daniel Titus Littleton. Say amen for the choir.
Yes, God, you are sovereign in a world that's topsy-turvy, upside down, and out of control. You are in control. Dear Father, we praise you tonight. We give your name the glory because there's none like you nowhere. Thank you for being good to us. You've blessed us all week long and this 114th holy convocation. You poured out your blessings upon us. And here we are the last night. Do it again. Somebody needs you in a special way. 
Pour out your spirit upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, save lost souls, heal wounded spirits. In the name of Jesus, and we'll give you glory. And we'll give you glory. And we'll tell you thank you. Oh, I wish I had a church that don't mind appreciating God. Open your mouth and tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. God, speak to our hearts. Give us a word for this, your people. And we'll tell you, thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the church says, thank God. Amen. And amen. Surely I'm blessed tonight. Honored and privileged to be standing before you. I give honor to our leader, our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank God for his wife and Lady Sheard and for our general supervisor. Thank God for you and for uh, our presidium, these great men of God that serve uh, so close with our presiding bishop. Certainly we give honor to our first and second assistant presiding bishops, Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin and Bishop Lawrence Wooten. Thank God again uh, for our general officers and to our chairman of the Board of Bishops and the Board of Bishops and tonight, I'm happy to have with me uh, my supervisor, Mother Frankie Davis Murray. Come on, give her a hand. And uh, I thank God for my wife for 42 years, Wanda, my two daughters, Danielle and Daphne. I want them to stand. Come on, give her a hand. My two daughters, yes. And surely I have six grands and we five are here tonight, along with three of my brothers. They're here tonight and along with my, uh, my son-in-law and my sister-in-law. I want them to stand right quick, give them a hand. Tonight, I'm blessed to have one of the greatest jurisdictions in the Church of God in Christ, <laughs> Mississippi Southern First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. I want them to stand. I want you to see them. Come on, stand up. Oh, yes. Amen. And I thank God for uh, my brothers. Uh, Bishop Kenneth Preston, uh, Bishop William Dean. I just want the state of Mississippi to stand. I want the church to see you. Come on, everybody from Mississippi. Some of y'all in Chicago, but you from Mississippi. <laughs> Come on, stand up, stand up. Come on, give Mississippi a hand. Before I go any further, at the age of 14, I sold my first seed in the church. I was a grocery boy. Sold a hundred dollars. And this week, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to sow a hundred times that. I'm giving $10,000 tonight uh, to the work of the church. I want to pass it on to my bishop, my presiding bishop. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And now, if you pray with me, I want to talk a little bit. And, and uh, the Lord gave me one word. 
It's found in Philippians, the third chapter, verse 13 and verse 14. It says, brothering, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press. I, I wish I had a church to just shout that word out. Press. Come on, say press. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Over the course of this past week, we have returned to the place where our roots, our home, and our headquarters here in Memphis, we made history and we made our mark around the world. From the corner of this vineyard, God has used the Church of God in Christ to impact the rest of Christianity. What we birth for others to emulate, in some cases counterfeit, can never be denied. But it has been a suffering way. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but God has yielded great fruit. The wine press of the gospel has poured out on humanity, has brought millions to know the Lord. Our growth stretches across every hemisphere, every continent. And to more than 100 nations, we've gone from storefronts to cathedrals, to retrofitting shopping malls, and to places where kingdom work transformed local communities. Um, but beginning without much of an education, now yields college graduates, college professors, and college administrators. There's hardly a profession that does not include one of our children. Here, there, and anywhere. Won't you agree with me? God has been good to us. Uh, right through here, if God has been good to you, you ought to put your hands together and give God a praise. But now we find the new horizons new challenges, new ventures, ventures, challenges, and horizons that require re-engineering our old ways. But I want to assure you, we cannot abandon the infrastructure of our faith. My brothers and sisters, every now and then, the same house need renovating. Uh, the kitchen serves the same purpose. Uh, the living room, the dining room, the laundry room, the front yard and the backyard have uh, the same purposes. Being married for some time, I know a spouse is going to want some changes. New appliances, new electronics, aesthetics. Yes, efficiency calls for new equipment. Rooms get a new facelift. Landscapes are redesigned. But the house and the purposes remain the same. The church throughout history has had to comport with new generations of believers from the first century of an unlawful exercise of a religion freedom to Constantine declaration of that same freedom. From the exclusive rights of the priest to read the Bible, 
to the printing press, from print to radio, from radio to television, from television to computers, from desktops to laptops, from laptops to hand foot, handheld smart devices. We have witnessed an ecclesiastical evolution within the community of the Christian faith. What concerns me is not the changes. What concerns me are changes that abandon purpose and foundation. A uh, foundation is important for anything built. I've noticed in the last 10, 15, 20 years, they're taking old factory buildings and converting them into apartments, which must answer the question, for what purpose do I now exist? And the church is no different. This is not an uncomplicated question to pose. Sometimes we get in the habit, habit of doing things and forget why we are doing them. There must always be an intentional inquiry. What does the Lord require of me? Yes, what does the Lord require of us? What purpose do I now exist? Paul says this, I become all things to all people. I believe the basis of one which Paul was speaking was and is the matter of hardship. Paul in context is saying, I'm willing to press through the hardships of life if it means Christ gains. Let me just pause here. I, in this time that we're living in, we got some lazy folk. They don't want to work in the church no more. In fact, they don't want to come to church anymore. Many of them are saying COVID-19 is in the church. But I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, God told me to tell our church, after 114 years, that it's time that we get in the press. It'll be a shame for us to leave this convention and go back home and sit down. Oh, y'all don't hear me. All the prayers, all the preaching that we've heard this week, we ought to be motivated to press. Somebody shout press. In the 21st century, especially us that live in the United States. Hardship must be a matter of choice. Ask some of the missionaries from first world countries and they'll tell you hardship, choices are for millions, a matter of life and death. I believe God is gonna judge us by such things. But we just don't want to make sacrifices for nothing. Oh, y'all don't hear me. But Paul told the church at Rome, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you offer yourself, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices. I believe Paul is saying to you and I, uh, that we ought to volunteer to suffer. That's right. That's right. That's good. That's good. We ought to volunteer to sacrifice. We ought to yield to hardships and press our way through. Yes, we're going to leave here with our buckets filled full of a letter ring. But the question for us tonight, what are we going to do when we get home? What are we going to say? What, are, what stories are we going to tell? What revelations will unfold? You see, this global 
pandemic killed 6.6 million people around the world. Over a million here in the United States. Within the ranks of our leadership, we suffered the loss of many. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I often ask the question, why do bad things happen to good people? But the Lord spoke to me in a hymn. He said, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Studies have shown that pastors have walked away from their poor pits. Pillars of local churches have gone on to be without the Lord. Financial challenges abound. Foreclosures are threatened. Technology has shifted the work of the church in a new direction. Or oh, y'all gonna pray with me? There are many that are studying trends and they've been warning us of a changing society. Y'all don't have to look far to find that this society is, is going mad. They've been warning us of generational gaps and cultural shifts. But I come to tell you, we now must dig deep in our theology in order to contend with it all. In the chaotic times like these, these are times of decline, times of difficulty, time, times of division, times of disunity. We are challenged to find that the hollow hand that holds us, that handles us, and help us through these dangerous tours and stairs. The world is in such of an anchor, an anchor that holds, grips, and sustains. Yes, we're in a time of a wind-tossed society, but I come to tell you that the Lord is saying, help me say press. It's no time to give up, my brothers and sisters. But it's time to hold on to God's unchanging hands. My brothers and sisters, we have returned to our sacred grounds right here in Memphis, Tennessee. And the world has felt the Pentecostal flames. Every Christian movement must admit the church of God in Christ have left the mark. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. I've been heard some preaching this week of worshiping, preaching, and praising. Thank God for our presiding bishop or oh, he's taking us back to real praise. He's taking us back to real worship. And so, my brothers and sisters, I believe that we owe our pioneers a debt of gratitude for their sacrifices, holding up the blood-stained banner of our Lord because of the blood plowshares of, of the gospel, have dug up fallow ground, planted and watered, a paradigm of vital, fervent lifestyle. We that are left here, we must preserve what the old pioneers left for us. Or oh, y'all don't have to agree with me. They have been the example of hardship. Uh, we don't hear it anymore. But I used to hear the whole saints say, holiness, holiness, 
is a suffering way. That suffering led to our prosperity. But now we have to own our own challenges. Though a different nature, they're just as devastating if we're not careful. But I come to tell the church of God in Christ, holiness is the right way. Holiness is the only way. I hear the Bible said, a highway shall be there in a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. I hear Paul writing to the Philippines. He's writing to Philippi and it signals something for us today. He's saying to us that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. I hear him saying, be confident of this very thing that he that has begun a good work in us, he's able to complete it before he returns. I hear Paul say, let this mind be in us that was also in Christ. What Paul is trying to tell us that it's a price that we got to pay. Yes, in these last days, we're going to get wounded. In these last days, we might have to find a foxhole. In these last days, we're going to experience danger. But I come to tell the church, stay in the press. Press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Paul could have easily said, persevere until you achieve the ultimate. That in Christ, no one to deny or no one would deny the greatest of calling, the greatest vocation, the greatest of titles, or the greatest of reputation. But when you come to the place of being picked out, to be picked on, I come to tell the church, great ministries are birthed out of great tribulations. Great character is born out of a struggle. I come to tell the church that we've all been called to the ministry of hardship. Dr. Charles Adams called the matriculation from the University of Adversity. We've all been born and to this world through the hard labor of a mother. And I come to tell the church, the history of the church is not a monarchy of splendor. It is a kingdom fought and a forge in battle that are fought and forged in the bladder. The victory is not a wink and a nod but a battle and battery. Saints of God, I want you to know that battles have been fought. Revolutions have been fought and won by the least. Yes, by the unlikely and the motley. We're seeing these kind of victories and theaters and on television. But I want to share with you tonight, I've seen it in stories, in biblical patriarchs and matriarchs. If you call Abraham, he'll tell you of an altar without a sacrifice. If you call 
on Moses, he'll tell you of a staff and deep water blockade. If you call Samuel, he'll tell you of a place called Ebenezer. If you call Esther, Esther will tell you of a dress, a banquet, and a fast. If you call David, he'll tell you of a slingshot and a giant. If you call Elijah, he'll tell you of a cloud in a hand. If you call Samson, he'll tell you of a jawbone and a thousand enemies. If you call Jonah, Jonah will tell you of a vomiting fish. If you call Peter, Peter will tell you of a cross turned upside down. If you call John, he'll tell you of an island of Patmos. Yes, in every event, the storm comes first. We'll discover total dependence on our God. Somebody ought to identify this. You'll find yourself in narrow places. You'll find yourself in thirsty places. You'll find yourself in dark places. You'll find yourself in sick places. You'll find yourself in losing places. But I come to tell the church, I have experienced looking defeated, but I wasn't defeated at all because God kept me standing because I stayed in the press. You can talk about me if you please, but as long as I can call on my help, as long as I can call on my help, everything will be all right. When you read Paul's letter, hey man, you got to read it with care for him. Because if you miss this, you miss the message. When you hold up this poem, you'll find an Adam in the garden trying to be like God. Yes, in other instances, you'll see Jesus, who is God, stripping himself of his divinity, becoming a lowly servant, suffering the anguish of humanity, subjected to examination and Pilate's judgment hall, whip with a cat of nine tails, carrying the cross up Gartha, Gartha Hill, drained of his blood, tears in his side, dying, somebody help me say dying, that you and I may live again. I don't know about you. That is my mark. That is my goal. That is my aim. I come to tell the church, it's time that you empty yourself. Get rid of the junk that's holding you back so you can stay in the press. It's time that you surrender yourself. It's time that you submit yourself. It's time that you equip yourself. It's time that you sacrifice yourself. It's time that you die to yourself. Though they bury you, one day you're going to get up again. Somebody shout yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Lies and the mystery of Paul's writing when he said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Christ. Wrapped up in the word press, there's a word, dioko, the idea of pressure. Yes, it describes intermittently to follow to pursue, to persecute, or 
about to flee suggested to me in passion pursuit. Paul was in pursuit of our Lord and Savior. We have lost our commitment. We have lost our love for God. We have lost our way. We have lost our faith. But I come back tonight to create a sense of urgency in us. God told me to tell you it's time that we press our way. Oh, look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, it's time that we press our way. You may not be able to see land, but press. Yes, you may not be able to realize your dreams. Press. Yes. Press a turn to the mark. Don't press for the prize. The mark is wrapped up in the mystery of God's real. If you press toward the mark, I said if you press toward the mark, if you keep your eyes on the mark, the mark will reveal the prize. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. Some of y'all want your pie and your cake on this side. But my mind, I hear a song in my spirit. Oh, heaven, heaven is mine. Don't you want to go to heaven? Yes. So I say to the church, I'm pressing on this upward way. New heights, I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm on the on upward mountain. Lord, somebody shout, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I come to tell you, it's in the press, press in against hard times, press in when sickness come, press in against tribulations, press in when battles are waged, press in when storm clouds cover the sky and the rain falls like hell, press in when folk walk away, press in when people leave you, standing all by yourself, press in when you don't feel like it, press in when others tell you that you ought to give up, when others tell you you ought to hang it up, but I come to tell you, oh church of God in Christ, let's get in the press when we leave here. Let's go back to our churches and press our way. Go back to Sunday school. Go back to morning worship. Go back to prayer meeting. Go back to fasting. Press. I wish I could hear y'all shouting. Come on, South Press. We got to press our way. I heard another songwriter say, through many dangers, stars and stairs, I have already come to grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. My brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but we are in the finest hour of our time. Yes, the devil is gone mad, but God on this week has rejuvenated us. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about who I am. I'm excited about my salvation. I'm excited about the power that lies within me. I'm going to press until the day is done. I'm going to press until I hear my Lord say, well done, the good and faithful service. Oh, church, let's press forward. Come on, shall we? Yes! Oh, you ought to put those hands together and give God a praise. And 
this house. Won't you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. 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 In the past 90 days, I've had two surgeries on my right eye. Temporarily blind in this right eye. Had a stomach virus in the last 90 days. Went to the bishop conference, come back, COVID-19. I said to the Lord, you know, my bishop expected me to preach. And God just spoke one word, press. Some of y'all got more excuses than a thermometer. You all hear what I said? Some of y'all got more excuses than a thermometer. But the saints of old came to church, sometimes sick in their bodies, didn't have a lot of money. But oh, if I could just make it to the church, everything is going to be all right. So I come to tell you, God is going to hold every one of us here tonight accountable to our walk in Him. We've been kicking, picking them up and putting them down. But now the work starts. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. When we leave here, oh, brothers and sisters, it looks like the church it's gone mad too. Y'all forgive me for that. Can't find nobody that want to make any sacrifices. They're looking for a, a paycheck. But I remember coming up in this church, playing the bass guitar. They didn't pay me a dime. And I didn't look for a dime. And what has happened to our churches, our musicians have gone other places because they can pay better than we can. But I come to tell you, I am a living witness. If you stay right there, God will raise you up. God will put you in front of great men. If you just stay right there, oh Zion, what's the matter now? You don't pray like you used to. Oh, Zion, what's the matter now? You don't testify like you used to. But I come to tell you that God told me to tell the church, press your way. Press if nobody else show up and you're all by yourself. Press. I know some of us got 12 hour jobs, but I can remember the saints of old went out to the cotton patch, worked all day, came home and stay at church all night. But now in this pandemic, an hour and 15 minutes is all that we got patience for. But I come to tell you, God told me to tell the church, go back to full service. Go back to the terror season. Go back to seeking the Lord for the Holy Ghost. Stay on the altar until something happened. Press your way to the altar and stay there until the Lord heal your body. Stay there until you baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout yes! I want to pray. Is it all right that I pray, Bishop? I want to pray. Hallelujah. I believe that no one is going to leave here like they came. I believe some people got healed in this convocation. Some got delivered 
many got saved. But here's the challenge. Don't go back to your local church and give excuses why you can't. Be the Sunday school teacher. Don't go back to your local church and give excuses why you can't work. Get in the press and stay there. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've spoken what you have given unto me. This is your church, and you are in control. You told me to tell them to press. And I believe, God, there is a prize wrapped up in the mark that we're pressing for. Lord, you have called us to a higher standard of living. You told us that we should be holy. Lord, I pray for my sisters and brothers from around the world. Put running in their feet. Put a hunger down in their belly, a thirst down in their spirits, that they may press, that they may run like never before. Father, in this time that we're living in, people are dying by the thousands. Our cities are sick. Our schools are unsafe. Even our houses of worship are unsafe. But you said press. Lord, uh, I pray for every person that would obey your word tonight, that you would bless them abundantly, that you would touch their homes, their families, their finances, that, God, that you will restore their joy in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church says, amen. Listen right where you're standing. And my assignment tonight, and I want to do a good job. At the age of 14, I want to challenge some young people. I had my grocery bag and money, and a few tips, $100. The Lord said to me, trust me with that $100. And back then, Mama would fix six old boxes with chicken, old pound cake, and potato pie. We'd come to Memphis. We didn't have the money. Some 50-some years ago. Didn't have the money to go to the find, find restaurants. And boy, I got hungry that weekend. But God didn't lie to me. My life has been enriched by the favor of God. Hallelujah. I want to challenge some young folk. You throw away $100 buying junk, buying games, throwing it away. I want to challenge every young person in this room. Now, you don't hear this much, but I want every young person that got $100 I want you to trust God with it tonight. Amen. Trust God with that hundred dollars. The Lord spoke to me this week, and I was listening uh, to the speaker on the Friday night, I believe it was. And he said, Trust me with ten thousand. And one day you're gonna give a hundred thousand to God's church. I say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, my brothers and sisters, help me, Holy Ghost, but I got to say it. The reason why some of our churches are drying up because we don't see the leaders giving. I, listen, the night marks my fifth year anniversary. Five years ago, I was concentrating. Five years later, I'm standing here. Listen, I am a living, a living witness. If you trust God with your money, 
God would pay back with great dividends. Y'all hear me? Where are the young people? Where are the young people? I want you to get in this now. Every young person that got that hundred dollars. Come on, come on. God know you got it. Bring it here, bring it here. Come on, get in this aisle. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, every young person, yes. Come on, every young person. I'm gonna wait on you. Fill this aisle, every young person. They got a hundred dollar bill. Come on, young people all over this building. Y'all just give them a few minutes. They're coming, they're coming. They're coming. As these young people come, because you give, Kojic does. We're getting ready to give. And those of you that want to give tonight, you can call 888. 880-1040. Or you may text 289-50 and type in Kojic. Or you can download Giblify. I'm going to wait just a few minutes. Wait a few minutes. Come on, come on. All over this building. As a young man, Mother Bibbit was living. She said, I serve God with a money back guarantee. I had $20 in my pocket. I asked God for a new job and a new house. She said, in 90 days, if you don't get it, call me back, and I give it back to you. In 90 days, I got the new job, the new house new car and a brand new baby yes. <laughs> it's all my young people that are coming hallelujah in this wonderful give the young people a big hand give them a hand others of you can give a twenty dollar gift I'm going to give a hundred And I want you to get that twenty dollars in your hands, and I want you to stand. Come on, I'm giving a hundred. Every person that's going to give that twenty dollars, raise your hand. Let me see where you are. Come on, come on, give that twenty dollars. Isn't that wonderful? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this night. We thank you for these young people for making a sacrifice. God, every person, every young person that would give that hundred dollar bill, I want you to give back to them a hundredfold. Don't let them miss that hundred dollars, but I want you to multiply it a hundred times. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every person would give that gift for $20. Ask your God to bless them. Bless their families. Bless their homes. God, bless their finances. And we decree it done in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen.
brothers and sisters, every night our leader has asked that you not walk until the offering is completed. And then you really need the prayer of benediction prayed over you. Some of you will be getting on the road. Some of you will be getting in airplanes on tomorrow. You need to hear this final prayer for safe travel, that God will let the angels go ahead of you on the road and get on the airplane with you and take you back home safely. So will you please, for our presiding bishop, will you please just stop walking? The offering has to be taken out. And for, this is also for security reasons. They're yet giving. So please, I wouldn't leave without having the benediction prayed over me. I thought somebody would help me. And, and then, these young people are yet in line giving this $100 seed on both sides. It's, these are young people. So, Let's not, this is something that, that is so heavy on the heart of our presiding bishop, and he calls it a bad Pentecostal habit. Let's not, let's not break his heart. Amen, church. I'm gonna ask the, the praise team to start back singing until our giving is complete. Please, nobody else walk. Nobody else walk. The offering has to be completed. Come on, keep singing that blessed be the name.
be able to get into the General Assembly. Is this Ezekiel McCowan? You can come, you can come to the platform, your key. Ezekiel McCowan, God bless. Thank you for your obedience. You're in the hands of Bishop Michael Jones. I'll stand, we're all standing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies toward us. We thank you, God, because you blessed our coming in. Every day you met us and poured out your spirit. Souls were saved, bodies healed, minds renewed. And so, Father, we thank you as we look back over the past two years and all we've gone through, we understand it was just but a moment. So God, we bless you. Thank you for giving us another chance. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to come back as a family, to bless your holy name. Now, God, we pray that you bless our going out. God, don't let us leave the same way we came. We decree and declare that we're not leaving the same way we came. God, we're leaving revived, renewed, and strengthened. And God, the seed of everything that's been poured into us this week, we pray, God, that it will blossom in our homes, in our churches, in our jurisdictions, all across the world. Now, God, we pray that you give us traveling grace. Let us return back to our destinations, safe and sound. Father, we lift up our presiding bishop even right now, that all that he's given this week and all this year, God, that you would restore. God, you would anoint him afresh in the name of Jesus. And then all of those, God, who hold up his arms, bless them as well. Bless this church. And God, we give you praise. We believe it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen.